Hey guys, welcome back. It's Raph and John uh, here to talk to you this week about Birds of Prey, the Emancipation of the One Harley Quinn. Uh, we're going to change up our format a little bit this this time around. Uh, try to be uh, this, uh, a lot more accurate with what we want to say about this. So, uh, some quick hit news around this film. Uh, came out last week. It opened to about uh, 33 million domestic box office, which is the lowest DC opening since uh, Jonah Hex. Um, and uh, keep in mind, this is a this is a budget of uh, over 100 million dollars. So. It's not looking really good for DC. Uh, so we got a chance to check this film out. So I'm gonna give you my rating right away this time around. And I gave it a C minus. What about you, John? What'd you give it? C minus as well. C minus, yep. all right. So we're gonna talk about now why we gave it this rating. And uh, quick hits as far as that goes. Ultimately, how what I felt about the film was that it was uh, it was it, it was a it was basically a cartoon. It was a cartoon, a live action cartoon is the best way that I can explain it as to how it felt as far as the pacing of the film, the way it went across, the characters it it it, it left out because we've lost actors along the way. Like Jared Leto is no longer the Joker, um, Ben Affleck is no longer Batman, and they just, they just couldn't incorporate them into this story. And I don't think they wanted to in any ways, uh, to be quite honest, especially looking, seeing how the film uh, went along. Uh, I don't know. What else you got, John? Um, my, my take on this movie is that the, the writers don't have a clue what they're doing. They don't have a clue how to write movies if, uh, for comic book viewers. They don't know how to do um, comic book movies well. Uh, DCU, I think. I think that after this many uh, number of releases, we can confidently say that they have a disconnect between their audience and what they believe is going to work. Uh, and this one can be laid at the feet of Robbie. Um, she um, she was in, think, she she was in in charge of pushing this. Yeah, you think she had a lot of creative control when it I think came she did. I, well, I think she I think she had the, enough creative creative control to make this movie about her. And mm -hmm. a movie about Harley Quinn doesn't work. Um, Harley Quinn is not a feature in a comic book for very long. She she gets these one offs and, and like six issues runs, but Harley Quinn without uh, Joker is kind of uh, pointless. And Joker without Batman doesn't very well work. So Harley Quinn without Joker and Batman is is a drift. The character it, it, doesn't work. Yeah, I I, I gotta agree. I mean, ultimately. Uh, Margot Robbie, uh, Robbie was in fact one of the producers, so she by default has a ton of creative control because um, she's a producer. So uh, she's also the lead in the film as well. So she's she has probably even more creative control than your average lead would have uh, because she's also producing it. Uh, she, I don't know as far as her pushing the film. I think uh, of course she wants to get the movie made because you know it's a it's a it's a it's a character that she enjoys playing and it's money for her. Uh, I do think that DC wanted to get this movie made just as much as she wanted it to get made because DC does everything by charts. They just throw charts out there and see and, and sees what sticks. Uh, no logic to it. They just saw, hey, Suicide Squad was successful uh, money-wise money anyway, but, um, you know, as far as the critics go and fans, everybody pretty much hated the movie, but it made a ton of mo uh, money. The consensus for that one was that Harley Quinn was good so dc ran with that because it's what they do they just pick and pick little pieces here and there and they run with whatever word of mouth may be without really taking the time to to, to acknowledge and see why it worked why did the fans like this and um Har uh, harley quinn in that setting was fine because she wasn't the main character so it wasn't overwhelming to have her a take over the film. She just had bits and pieces here and there, so it allowed her to give you one-liners, do a couple things here and there, and that's it. In this film, it's all her. And that's a lot of Harley Quinn. That is a lot of chaos to be focused on throughout the course of the film, and eventually it just gets tired. It just gets very, very tired. Yeah, the... There's a there's like a there's a lot of there's a lot of individual scenes that are just driving me insane with this movie. 
Uh, number one is uh, Margot Robbie weighs about what, 125, 130, if she's soaking wet and fully dressed? I mean, uh, yeah, I, I'd say probably 115 or so. I mean, she's a very petite uh, She's a like, girl. in the movie, she's like like punching guys that weigh like 270 and like knocking them down. Like, that doesn't happen. Uh, number two, the, the, the character of, of Harley Quinn isn't, a, is, isn't an Olympic-level gymnast. She is not a martial artist. She is not... Uh, uh, metaphysical she doesn't she doesn't have superpowers yeah she doesn't. um she's a psychotic murderer uh even in their dceu she's a, she's connected to the death of of uh, dick grayson yeah right so or is it todd i can't remember if it was todd or dick grayson anyways she's connected to the death of robin okay that was no, it's, that it's was todd it is todd jason todd yeah so um her and Joker would be in prison for that. And she's just walking around in the middle of the street uh, of Gotham, the brightly colored, you know. Uh, very, yeah, very well lit uh, Gotham City, mind you. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the other thing is, is that um, while I, I liked the cocaine high um, bat wielding uh, scene in the movie, the rest of the fight scenes, including the climax, were just a joke, and, and I mean that. Except the only person that made any sense in any of those scenes was the huntress, the huntress who has been trained her whole life as an assassin. It makes sense that she's kicking people's asses. Yeah, and, and think, uh, she also what, what, happens what, to use a projectile weapon, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, she was played by Mary Kate Wins uh, Winslet. Is it? Yeah, like, yeah, right? yeah. And she had what five lines in this movie. I yeah, <laughs> and and I'll be honest with you, man. Like I was when she was on screen, I was very interested in the movie. And when she was, and when she wasn't, the fight scenes looked like a joke, except for the bat scene uh, where where yeah. Harley Quinn is using the bat. The rest yeah. of the stuff, there's like so many plot holes, man. It, it, the plot holes, oh, it, if, it's 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 absolutely huge. And and you know they t they 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 immediately explain to you why Joker's not in the film is because uh, Harley and, and, uh, and he have uh, broken up and they animate the beginning of the film, which I thought was interesting because the animation style that they chose for the Joker was your traditional Joker. And it wasn't Jared Leto's Joker at all. Like they've completely erased that character from existence. No. Um, and it kind of goes from there and it, it just goes back to the fact that Harley is, while she it while she may be an entertaining character, she's not an interesting character. Um, she's very one dimensional. There isn't a whole lot of character depth there, and this movie lacks so much character development that it, it just it literally throws the the main characters together and says go run with it, and that's it. And we don't even like they, they don't they don't come together to the very end of the film, and they're literally thrown together, and they just have one conversation. As far as who, so why should we come together right now? Oh, this is why. Yes, and that's it. Yeah, and uh, like, okay, so Gotham City is 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 comically corrupt, um, and I mean that in the pun sense and the non pun sense. It is very very corrupt, and yeah. you can't you can't be uh, Mr. Zaz and and cut people's faces off and Batman not show up. That's oh, yeah. just not going to happen. And if Batman doesn't get to him first, it's going to be Nightwing, or it's going to be uh, Cyborg, or it's going to yeah. be any of another half dozen freaking superheroes in Gotham. You're not going to stroll down the street after assassinating crime bosses and stuff and just just be okay. Yeah. Even in even in the ridiculous world of Gotham City, which I love Gotham City. Gotham City by itself is awesome if Superman and flash and green lantern and martian manhunter and wonder woman don't exist in this world because <laughs> if it was overrun with that much corruption they'd just be like batman would just be like flash i literally don't have time to deal with all that corruption and flash is like i can literally be done cleaning up gotham in 30 seconds and yeah. that would be the end of that would be the end of gotham's problems yeah pretty, um, and yeah you're right because you know what what keeps gotham going and what keeps a lot of those stories going is that the fact that they're not uh, do we lose him? Super. There you go. Hides by, so he continues. You know, it allows the stories to come back and continue on. It's like, well, how do you lock this guy up and they get out? Well, there's massive corruption. And it's as believable. 
it's believable from a, from 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 a, a fan perspective. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah, they locked Joker up again for the hundredth time. And of course, he's gonna break out in two days. So who cares? You know, yeah. but it, it allows it to continue on that way. Um, but this, you know, it, it, I think Black Mask was was portrayed by uh, Ewan McGregor, and I, I thought he did a great job. Uh, although it's not Black Mask, I thought the, that Victor's ass was great also. But again. That's not those characters, but I was willing. I was okay with letting that letting it go, because they were entertaining to watch. You and McGregor, the time that he's on film portraying Black Mask, is some of the best in the film. It really it, it, you see you get more story around Black Mask than probably anybody else in the film. To be quite honest, as far as his background, where he came from, what his motivation is, why he's doing what he's doing. Out of everybody else, do you, do you really get any of that? No, it's kind of the end. The only the only other semi developed character was the Huntress, where they actually the told Huntress. her hold her back story yep. a little bit. Yeah, and, and we then, don't even learn that till we're about what forty five minutes into the movie. I even, mean, even longer than that, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Like it, it's it, it's it, it's a waste of a villain. It's a waste of an actor. Um, it's a waste of a film altogether. And you know, look, man, there was a why, there was a lot of the SJW stuff going on in this movie too. I mean, they. They they did the whole every man in here is an inept moron or they're completely evil, um, which I don't care. I didn't. I don't mind. As if, if you could write the story and the story makes sense, do it. Yeah, it, there was it just becomes yeah. It just becomes massively overwhelming and distracting. So there was it, like sexual tension much. between Black Mask and and Zaz and Victor Zaz. Yeah, I didn't know where that that where that like, that was coming that's from. That's completely kind of new. That's not that's not in the comic books at all. I don't no. really care. Listen, if if you if if the character if, like I don't know if I don't I don't remember if Black Mask is gay or straight. It's never been a point of the storyline. If he is, I don't really care. It didn't make sense in the scene that it was put into, but whatever. I don't care about that. Uh, black Canary isn't a black chick in the comics. I don't care. She can be black in the, in the movie. That doesn't bother. Oh, look, we got a friend. Um, what I care about is writing. Write the story well. Yeah, good writing. Write the story well. You can make them all gay. I don't care. If the story is well written, it's yeah. well written story. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the, you know, whatever other agenda is out there, whatever the case may be. Um, you just want to keep it. What's that? Okay, I'll get you some right now, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'll get you some right now. Okay. She's so sweet. <laughs> Go. Um, I don't care whatever the motivation is as far as the agenda that, that they're trying to portray or whatever. As, just do it well. Just do it well. If you want to make it about, about uh, female-driven uh, characters and female empowerment, I, I'm all for it. Uh, you For know, real, I love have, strong female characters. Yeah, we, we have daughters. We, yeah, I, by all means, I want to see great character, great female characters that she that inspire her and look up to, and, and she can look up to and all that. Just write them well. That's all I'm asking for. That's all I want from DC. FYI, and no, any movie. nobody should be looking up to Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is no. a, a psycho murderer. No, she is a psychotic lunatic that should be locked away in, Har in, in Arkham Asylum forever and ever and ever and ever. Period. I don't care how entertaining people think she is. If you get to the root of the character and you understand, and you've read a comic book once in your lifetime, you would understand who Harley Quinn is and what's her motivation. And her motivation is death and destruction. Yeah. That is it. There's nothing else. There's nothing else there. Um, so I think that's, uh, I, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed that take on this, uh, our, our views on this one. We'll uh, let you know. Uh, so what else we got coming up next? It's uh, we got Wonder Woman. We got New that? Wonder Woman, New Mutants. Wonder Woman, yeah, yeah. Suicide yeah. Squad. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you, it, this film is gonna be uh, is gonna be a bust. It, it's 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 not gonna make his money back. This week, Sonic comes out this week, and they're already saying that it's gonna it's actually gonna do well, which is gonna take the box office away from Harley Quinn. So, yeah, well, that's you, a wrap you, on Harley. They 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 closed up the box office of Harley Quinn by making it R rated. They should have they should have cleaned up the language and cleaned up the violent scenes a little bit and made it PG thirteen. Um, and then I think their sales would have probably been 20%, maybe 30% higher. You're still not going to hit a hundred million, but you're going to get a lot. No, higher. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what made them believe at what, at, at, at any point that this movie was going to make, uh, Suicide Squad money or Wonder Woman money or any, I, I don't, I don't understand 
where what what were they look what were they looking at that made them believe for a second? Hey, this movie's going to make five hundred million dollars. I I don't see what world that was ever going to be a, a possibility because Harley Quinn just do, just does not appeal to the masses like that. It's just not the case. I, if, I, if if they made if they made if they put Harley Quinn in a Batman movie and they gave her they they did the origin well and they put Batman beside her and maybe another supporting character with her, it would be it would be a good movie. It could be a good movie. Who knows? It could, DC's it could it, so who knows? But yeah. yeah, yeah, DC's just too worried about making the next movie, I mean, they did, and they do it again. They want to set up a Birds of Prey franchise. That's what this movie was all about because that's how the movie ends: is them setting up some sort of Birds of Prey, Birds of Prey franchise, and it fails massively. Again, focus on making the movie that you're trying to make. Get good writers, good characters, write them well. Get you know, and, and go from there. But they don't. They're too focused on the next paycheck rather than this paycheck, and they continuously fail over and over and over again. So, I hope we're wrong. I hope I'm wrong about Wonder Woman because I really want it to be good. Um, but I gotta get the it. It's DC. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. All right, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, let us know what you think about this format. If this works for you guys, I know our videos have gone long in the past, so we're trying to um, cut them down a little bit so that you guys get everything that we're trying to say uh, without having to sit through uh, 40 minutes of video. Um, <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed that. And as usual, thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe.